Yes, thank you so very much. Good afternoon, um, viewers. Thank you for joining us today on the John Mayaki Show. Um, uh, today, we are glad to have you on the show. Um, uh, today, we'll be discussing how murderers are humans. That is, those of us who are human beings who have become so murderers. Uh, recent events support this assertion that the world over, including Nigeria, we are experiencing serious turmoil. Nigeria is particularly becoming inhabitable as um, siblings and neighbors live in mutual suspicion. And um, there's this feeling of um, cynicism. Um, recently in Benin City, a 25-year-old um, uh, maid, Dominion Okoro, assaulted and stole, uh, with his tool, killed Madame Oredola uh, Ibenedion, that is the mother of former governor Lucky Ibenedion, in a bid to rob her of her possessions. And um, that was quite unfortunate. This um, gruesome and shocking um, case of a murder is not um, only in a dual state. It, it was far from an isolated one. Uh, more have since followed. If it's not um, father, it's against mother. Um, then it is um, brother versus sisters. You have the Yahoo boys, Menans, and the innocent girls here and there. Uh, due to a combination of factors, including hunger and poverty, um, desperations of setting, many have resorted to unwholesome acts, um, dangerous antisocial behaviors, including the abduction of neighbors, um, friends for ransom. Um, this is quite sad and worrisome. Um, just now we learned that um, uh, someone was kidnapped in uh, Kano, um, Abdul Malik Mohamed Tanko, owner of a school, kidnapped his own pupil. We also learned of another in Kaduna State, specifically in Zaria, 48 hours after Hanifa in Kano. Um, this is unfortunate. Um, that of Kaduna is Ashma Oshaibu, who was barely eight years old when she was kidnapped and later killed after four days in captivity, after 42 days in captivity. Her daughters um, demanded for 15 million naira ransom, father Alaji Shaibu, but was only able to pay about 3 million 45,000 naira thereabouts around Rigasa area in Kaduna State. Now, we want to invite um, you uh, to join us with our co-panelist, um, Mr. Idris uh, Jr., Idris Zekari Jr., and Madam Serena. Good afternoon, guys. Good afternoon, Mr. John. Thank you so very much. Uh, Madam Jennifer, um, could you please um, introduce yourself briefly? Good afternoon, uh, um, Sir John Miyake. It's an honor to be here. My name is Jennifer Serrano. I am the founder of the Unity Project Nigeria, which is a non-profit, non-governmental non organization uh, raised to combat the ills in the Nigerian society and especially focus on the young people. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Wonderful. Much wonderful. Uh, um, where are you joining us from? Uh, currently, I'm in the UK. Okay, okay. Uh, Mr. Idris, you want to introduce yourself? All right, thank you. Ben. To the Nigerians, my name is Comrade Idris Zekeri Jr. Uh, I am a public affairs commentator and I'm uh, joining us from Lagos State, Nigeria. Okay, so with um, Mr. Idris Jr. and uh, Jennifer Serrano, the chairman, the national chairman of uh, Unity Project Nigeria, we're going to unpack together this dilemma and um, well, um, we'll be asking for contributing factors to this very problem, as well as explore ways to put an end to the disturbing trend that is now threatening peaceful coexistence and communal trust. The frequency of these kidnappings has gradually made us devastated. We hear uh, and read about these occurrences, um, and we just have to keep praying. But of course, prayer is not solving it. Prayer is not solving it. Guys, um, Mr. Idris, what, what do you think will be the solution to this menace? Uh, the solution will always be that uh, government act as deterrence 
to people who think they can engage themselves in antisocial behaviors. When there is no deterrence for behaviors that are against humanity and antisocial, then you are incentivizing it. You are giving incentives for more people to go into this kind of behaviors. So when there is when there are deterrence, first of all, there are people who are not supposed to live among other humans. Any human who can take the life of another human ought not to live among humans. So when you are able to deal with issues like this as a government and as a people, then others will be discouraged from even taking that route. That is just a simple thing. We will have to deal with it. When there is a murder, a case of murder, the police must go. It's not only those ones that have become sensational on social media or on the uh, conventional media that the police must deal with. They must take it a step further and handle those cases, even those that don't come out in the, in the media. And I can assure you that there are more cases of murder that don't come out in the media than those that come out in the media, both conventional and social, as the case may be. The police should be able to establish every single murder case that takes place in Nigeria. People, angels do not come from able to commit those heinous crimes. Human beings committed them, so they must be able to get them. And once you continue to reduce the deviance in society, society becomes better. That is the secret. That's why we have the prisons. They are meant to keep those who cannot fit in society away from society. So that's the ultimate solution. Apart from, of course, social reorientation and all the others that those in the social circles will argue. Thank you so very much. People flock. You see, what is even more important in all of this is that um, when the Hanifas case, uh, Hanifas case, the first case happened in Kano, people flocked the parents' house uh, to console them. Relatives, friends, well wishers. Um, among them was um, Abdul Malik Tanko, the proprietor of the private school she attended. And um, he was reported to be deeply saddened. I mean, the man who killed the, the little girl, five years old girl, the proprietor now, uh, he was deeply saddened, as in, oh, what has happened? As in, he was sympathetic, as in, he was consoling the parents. Uh, whereas, whereas this guy uh, committed this murder. I um, want to find out from um, Mrs. Jennifer, uh, what are your thoughts? Of all, I, would like Say, to I think what is happening in Nigeria today, what is happening especially in terms of this uh, frequency of kidnapping, is Nigeria is slowly coming to Now, anarchy is, is, is just, let me, let me use layman's terms, it means a recognition of authority or controlling system. And in terms of kidnapping, kidnapping has been around for a while. But Getting more yeah. and more rampant in the society. Why is that? Because of a, 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 there's a theory called social learning, a social learning theory, that we observe things. As human beings, we learn by observation. We, we, we model the behaviors we have seen. And some of us, when we were, um, some years ago, we heard of some high-profile kidnappers. Uh, they were arrested. Nothing happened. And then some people were kidnapped. They demanded X, Y, Z ransom. They were given. And so, little by little, the message of kidnapping is a lucrative business. Kidnapping is the way to go about things now. Started becoming a way of life in Nigeria. And so people are learning to do it. And, and that's, that's so, so, I mean, it is so rampant. Now, you, you look at this situation with uh, Hanatu, a young girl, oh, sorry, Anif, uh, uh, well, sorry, I forgot her Anifa, name, I know it's Ani, yeah, Anifa. Anifa, yeah. Anifa. Anifa, yeah. Now, we, we find the proprietor of this school, a person who has the duty or care mm -hmm. to protect, to teach this child, is the same person who had her kidnapped, killed, and, and pinned, butchered and buried. What does that tell you? That as a part of the society, people are becoming more bestial. They're not, be they're, they're changing from being humans to becoming beasts. Because he violated, aside from the law, he violated his duty of care towards the child. And then he also pretended to be 
a, a, a well wisher of the family. He actually went there and, and, and condoled with them. And for me, I, I, I think the most heinous part is not just that he killed her, he cut her into pieces. This is no longer human behavior. This has become animalistic, a beastly behavior. Why are we here in Nigeria? Now, that is a huge topic, which I don't even think we have enough, enough time for. But we will continue to see more of these crimes in Nigeria, unless certain measures are being put in place. Wow, thank you so very much. Thank you. And when people say someone was poisoned to death, I mean, the Hanifa was not just caught to <laughs> Hello, good afternoon. Hello, good evening. Oh, it's evening already. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Steve Adipodu. Thank you so very much. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Akukwedo. Okay. Please share your thoughts with us. Yes, I... I, it's a good topic this afternoon and uh, this evening. Uh, we we are actually going through a lot in this country, and uh, I, I think uh, I, sometimes I'm forced to ask since uh, uh, we have lost our caution as a people because the story we hear every day as it has to do with insecurity, as in. Uh, my humanity, my humanity to man. A fellow human being like you, a slaughter human being like we are slaughtering animal. Uh, just because uh, people want to live beyond their means of uh, uh, livelihood, they want to. Everybody wants to be rich at the same time. Nobody wants to work. I think that is what actually uh, what has taken us to this level that we are today. And every time when I hear that they will take all these complaints to the doctors of the government, I, I sometimes I ask that there are some of these things that uh, I don't think it's just wickedness to uh, wickedness to each other, not the uh, government. Is it government that asks somebody to go and kidnap another person and be asking for ransom? I had a personal experience of this days ago. I was coming from Abuja. Uh, uh, that was uh, last week, uh, thereabouts. I was coming from Abuja and the uh, all the way from Abuja, getting to between Okene and Kogi, uh, just the community, the come and go go the to Lampende. And uh, I was pressed uh, to ask the driver to stop. And the driver stopped, like, I laughed from the day. The driver was even shocked the way I asked him to actually stop, though he sit down, but it's a little away from the time in town. And I asked the driver to stop, he stopped. And while the driver was stopping, I actually observed that the day could pass off. And, uh, because the vehicle was actually behind us and uh, it passed. And then I stopped and asked the driver to go because I wouldn't, I don't want to delay the passenger. And he left. Less than two minutes I alerted from that vehicle. The next thing I was hearing was gunshots. A few minutes I saw the vehicle reversing back. When I started asking what happened, they said it's kidnapper. And they took the two occupants in that vehicle, they took them and entered the bush. That means if I hadn't stopped, there is no way the driver. My own driver, there's no way we will not have uh, uh, encountered those people. It was because I stopped. That few minutes that I stopped was what saved the driver. And they took the other people and they, they took them into the bush. And uh, the following day, I was told that the uh, early hours of the morning, 2.30, 1.30, they were about. The same people came out again and uh, they, they, they kidnapped over, over a, a complete box. They took them into the bush. And I, I just can't imagine. What exactly is going on? So I, I think uh, we need orientation, and uh, our youth need to realize that people must work before they get money. This idea of getting rich quick is actually what has taken us to where we are today. Thank you. That is my contribution. Oh, thank you so very much. We thank God for your life. We will sincerely thank God for your life. Uh, these things can happen to anybody. It can happen to anybody. But um, uh, Mrs. Jennifer, what about uh, in the UK, before you become a teacher, before you become a proprietor or a proprietress, before you venture into any profession, into any business in the UK, you've got to do training, background checks and all of those. Now we've got uh, cameras everywhere in the UK. You can't commit a crime and go within 30 minutes, one hour, you, you'll be caught. What do you think we should do or we can do as a country? Okay, 
So say in, in terms of Nigeria, what, what we see playing out is a lack of an understanding of the social contract, okay. which is we don't, as a society in Nigeria, we have missed out what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. And I read, referred earlier, just, just to, to, to point out that it has now become okay to kidnap and it's the fastest way of making money. And so it has become acceptable. It has become the norm and nothing is being done. There is no punishment. There is, and so when there is no sufficient punishment, there is reinforcement that this behavior is okay. Now, in, in a country like the United Kingdom, they have quite a lot of measures put in place. Before you can get certain jobs, you have to have some background checks to make sure that you're not going to abuse uh, the authority, especially when it comes to like teaching, anything to do with like looking after vulnerable people, children, disabled adults, you have to go through all of that. Nigeria, where do we begin? Do we even have accurate data? Do we know how to check documents? Anybody can pre present any certificate and it will be accepted. Even your driver's license, can, can be easily forged. Um, so we, we don't even have that measuring system, a system where we know who is who, and then we can actually monitor what is going on. So I would say, let's begin from the basics in Nigeria. Let's make sure that this identity, we're able to identify people. And in terms of schools, it's about time every mushroom school is demolished. Home schools should be demolished. Before a person can put together a school or a tutorship, there should be proper licensing. They should go through the proper procedures so that people don't put their children in, 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 in the lives of such uh, a wicked and you know we can quacks like tanko however in, in in now because i have to do, uh, i have to balance this we also have registered schools where worse things have happened uh, there was a story last year of a girl in a school in abuja that was raped uh, well she had been sexually abused several times to the point that um a rotten condom in her caused her to her die of sepsis now this is a well-registered school but then what happened? What has happened to this case? Nothing. Okay. So we have a, a recurring situation where you, things are happening and there is no control measure. Sorry. There is no punishment. People are not brought to book. Sorry, let me ask you. Um, in developed countries, even in the UK, especially in the US, we've had um, instances of shooting and all of those. I'm not justifying what is happening in Nigerian schools. But we, we've had instances of shooting in Nigeria, in, um, in UK, US, especially popular in the US. What will you say about that? Okay, well, in the United States, quite a lot of people have access to guns. And a lot of schools have tried to put measures in place where they have metal detectors before uh, children can get into school. And then also, they started training teachers. This is what they've done and it's actually reduced. They started training teachers a few years ago, which is to psychologically profile students. So you can easily see a child that is about to bring a gun. You would see the behavior, the escalation in the negative behavior. So it is still all about training. Here in the UK, there is hardly any such stories of someone coming to school with a gun. Or, but as I said, people in that sensitive uh, careers are being trained to spot these challenges. So when you see a child who has behavioral problems, it is easily quickly raised, and then social services get involved if the child has to be taken away from the parents. So it's control measures. We don't wait until it happens. Yeah, there will be a few that will escape the nets, but at least there is a measure, a safety net. You know, as, as like in Nigeria where we have mosquito nets, there will still be some mosquitoes that will come through the net, but at least it stops the huge majority of it happening. Somebody follow, following us on Facebook has said, Omolu Abi has said, there is no mechanism to follow up crime. And um, even from the police, from the, in the judiciary, um, reporters, journalists, media, um, there's no mechanism to follow up crime to conclusion, logical conclusion. Uh, Mr. Zachary, what, what is your take? Uh, it reemphasizes the, the point I made earlier that there is no there is no established deterrence. The scripture said, you spare the rod, you spoil the child. He, now, no, I'm not talking about children now, because government to citizens is like father to children. So that's the point I'm making. 
if you know that if you commit any kind of crime, you will be arrested, you will be prosecuted, you will be sent to jail, and in any case, if it's a murder case, you will be sentenced to death. It is enough deterrence not to commit crime. But when you know you commit crime and there is no, there is no, there is no sort of deterrence, you may not end up not getting caught. It will be one of those unresolved murders. The motivation to commit crime is there. I'll give you a good example. Most of the court groups in, the, in Nigeria, and in particularly in those states, court groups, when I say court groups, are secret court groups, they have what they call butchers. These butchers are known, but they still go on committing this heinous crime because there's no deterrence. Abroad, elsewhere, you are free to join any association, any organization of your choice. But when you commit a crime, the crime is treated differently from the organization that you belong to. Here, everything is lumped up together. That is why you see there is a video that is trending of a policeman who almost killed a gay along the Benin Lagos Express route because there was an altercation. He actually took his rifle and fired on the ground, almost killing the girl, shot at her, although she, she was not hit by the bullet. Now, it took, since December last year, that policeman only got arrested this month, so a few days back, simply because that became a popular story on social media. It is the same thing. If Anifa, Anifa was not on social media, chances are that that murder will be an unresolved murder. There are several of them. I schooled in the University of Benin. In a course of the community where I was staying as a student, there were several murders that tomorrow are unaccounted for. I am saying this on national TV on, 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 on pub, in public. These are verifiable information. There were several murders that took place within the school premises that were not resolved till today. And that is what has been my argument. If you know that when you commit a crime, you will be arrested, chances are that you will not want to attempt it. I, I know the... the the topic of today was, suppo was uh, uh, supposedly situated around the uh, uh, ritual killings. It's the same thing, whether it is ritual killings, whether it is kidnapping, whether it is harm robbery. When you know if you commit a crime, the crime is going to be resolved. The culprit is going to be arrested. You will not try it. That is the difference between the civilized world and those of us in Africa. Most things that happen here, sometimes when you go to the police, I, if you go to the police to report a case, do you know that you have to pay money to, to, to incidence a case? You have to pay. I have paid in the past. What would you do? What, what choices do you have? You go to the police, you want to report a crime, you have to pay in the, in the procedure. If, if you need to arrest somebody, Mr. John Mayaki in Nigeria, you will have to pay the transport of the police from the police station to wherever that person to be arrested is. What if you don't have the money? What if you come from a poor background? Then the problem persists. And that's why people will commit crime. They will kill. They will, they will, they will dismember the people and bury them in shallow graves. And they believe that they will have the impetus to go and condole with the family, like in the case of Anifa, go there, condole with the family, Tell them sorry, go back to your house and sleep. You see, we are now competing with animals when it comes to murderous nature, bestiality. We are now in a, a strong competition with animals. Animals that kill themselves for fun. People now kill for fun. That's where we are. Quite sad, quite, quite sad, quite sad. I, I won't, uh, today is not the best time to share my experience. Yes. Uh, when, pe uh, when people say someone was poisoned to death, and if I was poisoned to death, the words do not just, um, we don't do justice to the word poison to death. I mean, and if I suffered to death, it sounds like instantaneous, but it's not. When, when you poison someone, you die slowly. And so, and if I didn't just die and just died instantaneously, she died slowly, she died in pains. It's quite unfortunate. Like you, you, I was buried in a shallow grave. Yes, I'm buried in a shallow yeah. Mm, yeah, caught in two pieces. Quite, it's like one drink uh, poison and you just die. No, the person dies slowly. It, it's quite unfortunate. Um, I will find out from um, Jennifer. Um, you have an organization, an NGO. Um, what do you do? Are you also into this um, type of issue? Okay. Um, I, I come from a, a sociology background and uh, I studied criminology. And some of what we studied is what we see. Nigeria is sort of a, a perfect case study of uh, we see strain theory where people find it difficult to make it in a legitimate means. And they see more negative examples of people who are doing well. Uh, most of the role models in Nigeria are 
quote unquote, thieves or embezzlers. Uh, so we find this happening in Nigeria and we have sent the message to young people that don't bother to go to school because your professor is broke, your parents are broke, but the people who are doing everything wrong are the ones living the life and they end up in public offices oppressing you with their police escorts. That is the way to go. So that's what we see playing out in Nigeria. So I, my organization started with um, looking for a way to, to, to solve or to reduce this. So which is using the social learning theory. And the last part step of the social learning theory is about motivation. We want to reduce that. We want to give motivation to people, which is in order for people to succeed, they need a sense of self-efficacy to combat the, the disadvantages, the challenges, the obstacles. So ultimately what we do is we bring young people together and we give them, first of all, that self-belief, that, that mental... Uh, what's, uh, what's, the name? what's the name of your organization? It's called the Unity Project Nigeria. Okay. And we work with young people from ages 16 up until 40. I know you say 40 is not young, but I think 40 is young because up until 40, <laughs> people are still struggling with careers and parts they want to go in life. Anything after 40, I believe people are very much stuck in their ways. They cannot be helped. So we work from 16 to 40. So we do, first of all, that mental reorientation. We do capacity building, helping people to build the moral standard that they need. If people lack a moral code growing up, if they lack uh, uh, positive examples, positive role models growing up, they would have problems. So what we try to do is correct that. So we are the Sunday school. We are now the teachers. We are now in the place of the parents. We are now in the place of religious leaders. We are now doing everything okay. that should have you, been done in their foundation to help them think right. And then we uh, identify uh, the ones with various talents and empower them into whatever field of business skill they want to do. And uh, we mentor and monitor them till they are self-standing and they are able to support other people. This is what we do at the Unity Project Nigeria. Oh, thank you so very much. That is quite um, understandable. Uh, yeah, the reality, um, however, is even more gruesome now in the country, Nigeria, uh, because um, person scream and read in pain um, when dying, uh, depending on the type of um, of poison, until the respiratory muscles are paralyzed Eyes and all, and all uh, the person can no longer breathe. This is the mechanism of action of most rat poisons that um, was um, applied or uh, administered to Hanifa. Police investigation led to the arrest of Abdul Malik Tanko, and there is the proprietor of the school. Um, who went to console with the parents. The, this man uh, confessed to the police that after two attempts to convince others to help him, he finally lured Hanifa, which is the student, to take her to his house, after which he contacted her parents and demanded for a ransom. You see, wh when we hear this um, problem of um, kidnapping, ritual money, um, quest to make quick money. People always say, oh, I want to help my mother. Tanko said, oh, I need money to pay um, teachers. That is his own stars. Oh, I, I have not eaten. Oh, I, I, I need money to do this and that. Uh, Mr. Zachary, do you need all this money? Yes, do you need all the money in this world to solve? Do you, how much do you need to eat as a human? How much do you need to eat and drink? Uh, Mr. Mr. John, circumstances do not make a man. Oh, they really? only expose him yeah. to himself. Yes. I repeat, circumstances do not make a man. It only exposes him or her, in this case him, to himself. Poverty is not a yastic mm -hmm. to become a thief. No. You were first a thief yes. before <laughs> you now use poverty as an alibi mm -hmm. to steal. It's the same thing with being a murderer, being a rapist. If you are a poor thief, you will be a rich thief. The social standing does not matter. There are rich people who are thieves. There are poor people who are thieves. 
there are young, there are rich people who are modest, and there are poor people who are modest. So the circumstances is not what dictates what you have to do. The person you have modern also has parents that they need to grow up, and if one needs to grow up and take care of her own parents, and if one needs to grow up and have a career, you are looking for money to pay teachers in your choosing line of career, in your choosing field of endeavor. And if one needs to grow up, first of all, before she can even choose a field of endeavor. So all this are about Daras. It's all, you know, rubbish that people hide behind. I'm trying to mind my language because we're in public. I would have said so certain things, but they are not allowed in the media, but it's all wrong. And that's people are just using this as an alibi. It's like those who are also killing for ritual purposes. What empirical evidence do we have? that there is a nexus between human blood and making money. The principles of making money are just very few and simple. You start obeying them, you begin to grow your one naira to two naira to three naira, and that is make, keep, and invest. That's the only way to become rich. Every person who has become rich made it through that way, except those who had the inheritance and those who spoke from government. So when you want to kill a human being and use the blood and give it to a babalawo to make human sacrifice, because you believe that is where you will make money, it shows a fundamental dysfunction with the brain of that person. Like Adam said, uh, our sister in the UK, the person needs the orientation from the beginning. You need to correct. There's something wrong with the mind of that person, and you need to correct that thing first before you can handle any other thing. Okay, I think maybe billionaires, billionaires and millionaires that we should have around my village. Yeah, there, there's noise around you. There's noise around you. I think the billionaires we should have around, around us in our in our closet should be um, should be the the the, the babala walls. All those traditional. I there should be the billionaires because. If um, if you can make someone a billionaire with um, another person's uh, blood, uh, it's very easy for the babalao to use the son or the daughter and um, immediately become rich. Um, I, I give you. I, I give permit me to make an introduction. All right. Permit me to make an introduction. All right. Okay, a number of things I would like to say regarding that. Just yesterday, I don't know any, anybody who is aware, there was a woman who was missing last week in Lagos. And apparently, she went to see her Babalawo in Ijeku or somewhere else, somewhere. of Lagos. And then she was found dead, and somebody passed missing and buried. So she died in the hand of her Babalawo. Hmm. Now, I would like to say a lot of things that we project in the Nigerian society is what commun com is a combination that brings this mindset. If you sit down and watch African magic, okay? African magic Yoruba, African magic Igbo, African magic whatever, all our movies, you always find this trajectory of somebody who did a ritual. I believe this is what all the somebody and it sort of became the way even for young ladies i hear ladies saying ah you can't get a man now unless you go to get kaya mata or this or that i think all those things should be shut down all those <laughs> those don't men see we, we talk about conditioning mental conditioning we are all conditioned because of what we see yeah. and what we hear yeah so if told you as a normal woman like this you cannot get to be your best shy kayamata so somewhere in your mind <laughs> after a while, you start believing it same thing as a young man if you are not a g boy if you are not a this you cannot make it so the conditioning is there and what do we see when we open our social media we see them glorified we see these lifestyles glorified all those things should be shut down I remember when I, I had a business in Nigeria, I always try to encourage young people. Now, we, um, a little digress about poisoning. I try to employ many young people, especially the ones that have no one to help them. One of the girls I employed, because I was quite strict to her, anytime I came back to my church, 
he would make my fridge. And I noticed that I was paralyzed for a few days. Later, we found out she was putting little bits of rat poison in my food. I almost died. I spent seven days in a hospital in, in the UK to get that flushed out of my system. She was poisoning me little by little. What, what did I do to her? Because I employed her. Because I put her in my house. So she wants me to be in bed, incapacitated, so she can do whatever she wants. She didn't like the, the training I was bringing to her. I also had another young lady. This one was about 16 years. She would say she's going home to sleep. And apparently she was bringing men to my house and all that. Eventually she said to me one day, Auntie, I don't see why I have to work. Because if I go to my boyfriend, in one, what I make from you in one month, I'll make it in one day and I'll have fun and enjoy myself. So what I'm looking for now is money that I can bleach my skin and buy Brazilian hair and catch myself a Yahoo boy. Because that's what she's <laughs> seen on Instagram. So my <laughs> They think I'm not doing well enough because I'm not living the life. I'm not in first class flights and driving Mercedes. So this is what we are fighting with. And it is not enough for Nigeria to sit down and point hands at the government. It's time for all of us to, 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 to join hands with this positive reinforcement. We need to all together set good examples. Even in our organization, we need to reward good behavior. We need to exemplify good character. Okay, somebody did well. This person recovered money. This person came to work on time. This person read and actually passed the exams. You know, we need to reward such behaviors. Even things like university admission in Nigeria, you have to pay, even if you make the cutoff. Because otherwise your name, I remember my sister, her name was out of, in and out of the list many times. Because somebody who didn't make the cut-off would be on. Okay. So, what are we supposed to do as parents? What does Nigeria want us to do? Are we, are we, are we, are we going to continue praying? Are we not supposed to keep our children at home? What are we going to do? Are we going to um, homeschool them? Um, what about the numerous benefits of classroom learning? Has it suddenly become a crime to send children to school? You send them to a government school, boarding school, um, some terrorist group abduct them, and yet when you send them to a private school, a teacher, I mean, um, a, 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 a proprietor in this case kidnaps and kills them. What are we supposed to do? The school, as an institution of learning, has long since become a harbinger of violence. Quite unfortunate. From the repeated mass killing of boarding, school, boarding students in Nigeria to the numerous school shooting in America, one has to wonder if there isn't a mass conspiracy to shut down the educational sector altogether. Schools have existed for centuries, and classroom learning has consistently shown to be superior to other forms of learning. Even in even 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 in um, in the ages of online classes, apart from lessons, kid learns interaction and learn lifelong hab habits that help them shape their characters for the rest of their lives. Therefore, the importance, the importance of classroom learning cannot be overemphasized. But the question, but the question is, how do we protect our children? Our guests will join us very soon. I'm sure there are technical issues. How do we protect our children? Another dimension to this story is um, the, the, the breach of trust by the elect teachers. Once upon a time, a teacher was the most, most, most respected member of the society. Someone whom you could trust with your word and go home and sleep without worry. Not, no more so, no more so. What this man has done now is to, is to disrupt many years of trust between school owners and teachers. Teachers all over Kano State, for instance, or even Nigeria, will now be subjected to rigorous check and, and random searches as no one can be trusted anymore. How can someone be so evil to abduct a little girl and then have the courage to go to her parents' house and share crocodile tears? Truly, the heart of man is, is really desperate 
and desperately wicked. Desperately wicked. That is how the Bible puts it. The death of a child is no joke. It's no joke. Um, Mr. Zachary, I, I feel saddened. Um, and um, I, I, let me, uh, yeah, you want to say something? everything by that uh, we have gotten to this time in our history that uh, ritual killings, killings for fun, uh, abduction for ransom has become the order of the day. A little bit it, of history. Ritual killings and rituals, human sacrifices did not start in Africa. Actually, it started in, from uh, the Central, North and Central America, the, the Maya civilization and the Aztec civilization. But these people who even were doing human sacrifices then have since abandoned this part practice. They have left it and it is now confined to the dustbin of history. But in Africa, in the 21st century, where people are sending uh, moon craft, space, uh, sending crafts to the moon, when people are doing uh, space science, what we invest our time in is spiritism, religiosity, and come what not. That is what you have those who are who believe in human sacrifices, sacrificing the pastors are making a fortune, the imams are making a fortune and brainwashing people. How do you explain, for example, that a man will preach to you and convince you that you should go and die for him? That when you get to heaven, there are seven virgins waiting for you. What happened to the virgins on earth? Even the ones on earth, people don't want to be too close to them because it's very tedious having a virgin. You want to go and meet seven virgins in heaven so that when others are trying to close some of heaven, you are. Too with our past, you know, they are making a fortune. They are making a king for it. And our babalawos are now cast into the same place, collecting their money, you know, taking them, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's a whole mess. It has to do with reorientation. It has to do with civilization. Even so-called educated people believing of these things is the most shocking part of it. So it's time for us to reorientate ourselves, starting from the unit, which is the family, to the society, to your area, talk to somebody. Be conscious of your environment. Educate people. Every opportunity you have, use it to educate people. Every single opportunity you have, use it to conscientize people. There is no such thing as a uh, 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 young plus or whatever it is. When you kill people, you are only wasting souls. Forget about the lies they tell you. When you kill somebody, you just kill that person for nothing. Human blood does not bring money. Goat, the blood of even a goat does not bring money. You have to work for money. And when you exchange your soul with that of the devil, and they lie to you, and you are actually using yourself, they tell you you somebody, you are actually using yourself to get all this money. How long will you enjoy this money? How much do you need to live the good life? How much do you need to eat three square meals a day? How much do you need to affect your life and affect the life of those around you? Again, our rich people must stop deceiving our people. Social media... Instagram, you must cons you must cons you must consistently tell yourself that there are certain things you don't need to see. In my uh, Facebook video, for example, there are certain videos that are permanently silenced. I don't see them. Even some of those so-called comedy, they are doing, they are programming your mind for evil. Some of those films, some of those things you see on Instagram, there are people I don't follow. Simply block and unfollow. Save yourself the mental stress. Otherwise, you think you are the worst person on earth, even when you are doing better than those on Instagram. Okay, thank you. Um, before I bring in uh, Ms. Madam Jennifer, in Edo State, um, around December here, um, during the Christmas, uh, Mr. William uh, Onyovosa uh, found her daughter Eloho, um, the daughter Eloho, dead in a pool of blood in her boyfriend's apartment in a uh, the good dollar, the good dollar uh, community, um, December 24th, that was just last year here. They had been dating for about uh, 15 months. Osaretin, um, the, um, the boy, uh, was a tipper driver before he left for, for Ghana. Uh, his trip to Ghana lasted for about three months um, and then he came back. Osaretin told Eloho, the girl, that uh, he was sick and asked her to get her some drugs. So Eloha bought some drugs for him, and they made sure he took um, he took them to 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 Osaretin. That is the picture of Osaretin of Eloha you can see on the screen. Uh, before she and the boy um, uh, could know it, um, I think the the lady died. Uh, on the following morning at about uh, six thirty a.m., Eloha was um, awoken by a call from Osas, 
who requested that um, she should come again. Um, in all of these, um, Eloha had to die. They thought that Eloha would come back. The parents called her line many times, but the phone had switched off. Then her parents went straight to Usa's house, that is Osaretin's house, located his room, opened the door, and saw Eloha lying in pool of her blood, but Usa's was nowhere to be found. This is in Benin. In Bayesa, about, um, I think this year in Bayesa, this very year, by last two weeks, three 15 year old suspected courtists hypnotized a girl, and um, just a teenage girl, um, and attempted ritual killing, but they were arrested. Um, the, the, what then is this unconscionable pursuit for money? That is what we're going to be discussing now. This unconscionable pursuit for money. Everybody wants money. Now, Madam um, Jennifer, are you there? Yes, I am. Good. Now, I want to find out from you. What is the role of the mother at home? That is, that is you, 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 the, your, your daughter wants to marry a man who, who is rich, who, who, who has got a, a, a G-Wagon, who has got this big car and wear big chains and um, top there in the society. Now, as a mother, your, 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 your daughter, I mean, tell us. What is the role of the mother in the home? Okay, I would say the role of, I would not like us to point out mothers. We would say parents because it takes two people to have children, a husband and a wife or a man and a woman. I think both of them are the building blocks of morality. You have moral code instilled in you as a child or you don't have it. It is, it is quite as simple as that. And as humans, as I mentioned before, we learn by modeling. So we learn to be upright, to be just from what we see from the people around us. If your mother is a liar or your mother is an adulteress, you would probably learn that from her. Or your father is a, a wayward person. Whatever you see around you is what you become. So parents have a first duty to teach their children by words as well as lifestyle what is acceptable. If you do not show them what is acceptable, they will grow up differently. They will grow up exactly as you have shown them. We always, if you look at the statistics, or for example, I mean, some of the studies I've done, um, like divorced, divorced families, they say about 70% of children from divorced homes end up as divorcees themselves. Is, is it a curse? No, it's not a curse. It's just what they have seen. So if a child grew up without a father, and because a child will learn how to be a father from what they see, or how to be a mother from what they see. So if they're lacking one of those parents, they will end up unconsciously pre-setting their minds to go that other way. So this is what we also see in our society. When mothers, maybe they, they married poor, we have, a, and this also comes largely from poor families. You hear mothers who say to their daughters, make sure you marry a rich man. Don't come and suffer. Don't suffer. Make sure you bring me a rich in-law. I want to, I want to be like so, so, so. I want you to bring this family out of poverty. This is the pressures these children go through. I have met many girls in, in um, one of my first earliest works in Lagos was with sex workers. And majority of these girls had similar stories. A lot of them had children or they had old mothers and their mothers encouraged them to come from different parts of Nigeria to come to Lagos and to come and help the family. So a mother sends her child, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, who is not very well educated and you say, go to Lagos, I help the family. What is that? But we find this this wrong models are from, from their parents. Same thing we, we see, uh, I think it was two years ago, where some mothers came out and said they are the mothers of the Yahoo boys. And they are defending their children because there's no alternative means. So you see the, 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 the decadence in the, in the base of society, the foundation of the Nigerian society is hugely corrupted. And greed has become the order of the day. 
So nobody wants to follow due process. You find parents pushing their children to go the other way, to make money by every means necessary. Children who also don't want to suffer because they came from suffering also want to be successful by any means necessary. That's what we find playing out in Nigerian society. So we need parents to go back to, to morality, to what is right. We need a, a social contract in Nigeria. We need to come back to a system of agreement. What is acceptable in this society? And we need to agree this is the way to behave and this is the way not to behave. From the littlest of us in society to the greatest of us in society. This is what is needed. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so very much. It appears to me <clears throat> that we have lost or sold our soul to the devil. In my, in, in my community, you see Yahoo boys here and there, they compete with people who have legitimate business. Um, I, I, we are all, I think we are all at fault. I mean those boys, those girls, who pour libation of blood and death to appease the god of money, the, the god of wealth. I mean, the, 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 the craze for quick fortune. No, 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 no more hard work. No more this morning I'm going to work, I'm waking up for work. What what they get is a laptop. What they get is a good phone and internet, uh, and they they get their 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 suspects or their victims online, and they defraud. Uh, I think we need serious, complete reorientation. They, they they are usually called leaders of tomorrow. We often refer to them as features of uh, of the nation, but do they actually see themselves as belonging to the future anymore? They they prefer the pleasures of now. And here, just now, let us share the money. Just now, let just give me the money right here. They, they is quite unfortunate. They prefer the delusional and the ephemeral. I mean, very ephemeral. How uh, can you eat a whole cow? Can you eat? I mean, Jennifer, you want to say something? Yes, I do. Um, I have to. Say, At the risk think... of you not accepting what I'm going to say, but I will ask you: Does Nigeria really? reward hard work does the system reward due process no you will find a qualified person applying for a job and they will tell you unless you sleep with Oga, or unless you give hr money you will not get it you will get the job you might even work for some months and you are not paid while your boss is traveling around going from london to to, <laughs> to wherever. So the system of society has said the wrong message that going to school, getting a job is not the way to grow. The normal legitimate means of making it in Nigeria is being frustrated. Yeah. Yeah. That is a fact. I, for example, I, 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 I had my youth service in Nigeria. And I started in Jos. So at that time, there was conflict in Jos, so I redeployed to Abuja. And when you redeploy, you have to find your own employment. I found my own employment. But how long did I last there? My employer insisted on sleeping with me. I said no. I got sacked. I got my accommodation taken off me. And I had to look for alternative means. Thank God I have an alternative means. But how about someone else who does it? This is a small example. The society we are living in is consistently forcing out the good people, forcing out every uh, every moral code. When a person, a, a man who has worked hard all his life, is a civil servant, done everything, he's supposed to earn his 50,000 a month, which is not even enough to survive anyway, but he's not even being paid because a governor has sat on the salary for a year for 16 months, for 18 months, for 24 months. What do you want him to do? What do you want his children and his wife to do? Such a man loses his respect in his household. He cannot complain when his daughters wear short things and don't come home. He cannot complain if his wife is sleeping with the neighbor to feed. This is what we find in the society. So we cannot blame the young people. We need to, to look at the, the system of, of how Nigeria is run from government to private sector and measures need to be taken. Everybody has a part to play in this. Employers who don't pay their staff, uh, uh, recruiters who, who collect bribe before they, they, they employ someone. And so a, a qualified graduate cannot get the job because he didn't have the money to bribe. Or, or, or a, a, a lady cannot get the job because she didn't sleep with the boss. So even if 
you want to toe the line in Nigeria, it is increasingly difficult. That is the fact of life. I, I quickly will ask you again that um, in all of these, um, what what are, you are in the UK. Hey. How do you, how do you operate your organization uh, um, in Nigeria, where you plan to impact your activities? How do, what, how do you go about it? What are your programs for the year? Okay, um, so I have not always been in the UK. I the UK to... now for a few months, and I'll be back soon. Uh, this year we have uh, a number of events every year we have annual events so we have our annual unity conference so we involve uh in important people notable people intelligent people from all 36 states well i do like to count abuja as a seven states so we have 37 states and 37 representatives and all will come together to prefer solutions so every year we look at a problem in nigeria and then we all come with diverse opinions on how to solve it so that's the unity conference which is a virtual conference we also have the unity awards and dinner where we honor good behavior we honor champions role models that we want the next generation to see and emulate. We also have the Youth Summit, uh, where our young people come together. We, we host that zonally, so, uh, which is uh, any one of the six geopolitical zones. So they will come together and talk about their challenges. We also have some youth leaders among us who can prefer solutions as a young person. And this is how you look at the problems and this is how you can solve it. Uh, then we also have the Unity Festival, um, which is more like a party, a celebration of everyone is welcome. All Nigerians from all ge geopolitical zones have representatives in that. Uh, but through the course of the year, every month, uh, we have twice a month our capacity building, which is uh, an online course where we, we train people. On, on how to improve their minds, how to better themselves, how to look inwards for solutions. Because as we have already established, the Nigerian society cannot help, but you can help yourself as an individual and help your society. And also we have various uh, schemes through the year, through all 36 states where we, we train young people and we give them tools, we, we give them some money, and we help them look for premises to start their business, every equipment that they need to start whatever business they, they, they need to, to do. Because we believe that if you cannot go the 6334 6, route, you can at least learn a skill, as they call it, handwork, that can put food on your table and you can take care of yourself and your family and thereby reducing the chances of you turning to being a criminal or menace to society. Um, so my presence in Nigeria is not necessarily needed. We have technology. We have a full team on ground. We have uh, representatives in all 36 states. We have a national executive. Aside from myself, everyone else is based in Nigeria. And uh, all we do is we meet, we give directives, and it's followed through. So work is going on even as I'm sitting right here. Okay. Um, I will come back to you to find, to you out, from to find you. out from you. Um, some, some some of those people I see here and there. I, I will ask for one funding. How are you funding? And two, um, who, are you planning to contest for an election? A lot. I'll come back to that. Um, use today. Uh, what I see. <laughs> I'll come back. To that. What, what I see today for my youth are not um, youth um, for tomorrow. They are youth who compete among themselves and not erecting pillars of love. Erecting pillars of peace, but in destroying the flowers of hope. Um, they, they take drug. Our youth, they, they kill. They, they plunder. They, they maim. They, 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 they drink alcohol and um, they just want to live their life. They, they, they chanced upon the magic of life. They are, they are experts on how to devour, like human lions in the jungle. They, they are fellow humans in the pursuit of money. I, I, I'm coming back to you, Mr. Zachary, but, but by what do, do, do we know them? Yes, but by their brands and logo, we know them. By their names and nomenclature, we know them. Where exactly do they reside? In our homes, in our, on our streets, in our universities, colleges, and our secondary school? They are there, they are there. Mr. Zachary, young boys and girls, are you there, Mr. Zachary? Young yes, boys and girls, young, young boys and girls, um, they, they, are, they, they are, yes, girls, boys, 
Secondary school in the universities. Well, what are your experiences, Mr. Zakari, when you were in school? They were there, you saw them, but you were not part of them. Tell us something. Well, uh, I, I, sometimes I feel, I genuinely feel for the younger generation because uh, I am just in my 30s. And if I have had the kind of experience I had, I wonder what will happen to those who are coming behind us. It was, it was almost a hopeless situation. I'll give you a vivid example. When I was staying in the coast in the year 2012, the cultists in that place were so powerful then that they were a law unto themselves. So much so that if a rape case is going on, you'll be walking out, you'll be walking on the passage of your house, you hear girls crying, suffering rape. You cannot intervene, you dare not talk because new talking means you are going to pay with your life. You dare not report because the police are aware. And sometimes when the cases get to the police, they ask them what to go and do there in the first place. And are we going to talk about those who are involved in ritualism and ritualistic killings? Are we going to talk about those who are permanent students? There are those who are permanent students. The premium students body in Nigeria today is populated by those who are over 50, 60. I was a student leader in school. I was involved in student politics. But as soon as I left the four walls of the university, and let it be. The younger generation can take over. But well, I can tell you today, there are married men, even grandfathers, who are still involved in student politics. It's just there. Those who are watching me can attest to this fact. Are we going to talk about prostitution? When I say prostitution now, we, we uh, people will think it's those that stand along Allen Avenue and those who stay at Allen Avenue in Ikeja here in Lagos and those who stay along the Ihama Road in Benin, those are the prostitutes. Those are the ones who are the who are publicly identified as prostitutes. I can tell you, up to 70% of young people, young girls in school, are involved in one form of prostitution or the others. They call it hookup. If you want to find out, simply go on Instagram. Simply go register on Tinder and check on Tinder. You will see people there who are into full-time hookup, and they have patrons. You see a girl who has no business address, a 200-level student, who is using an iPhone 13 and an iPhone 12. That is more than the pension and salary of his father of her father for one year. These things are real-life situations. And these are the, supposed to be the leaders of tomorrow. These are supposed to be those who will mentor the younger generation. Go to Dubai. I have a specific experience there. A lot of Nigerians are there prostituting. Across Africa, Mali, Libya, South Africa, Ghana, you were, you were talking about the instance of the young guy who went to Ghana, came back, killed his girlfriend, and, and uh, I don't know if he's been arrested now. Ghana now, they call them Sakawa boys. Sakawa boys is another name for Yahoo Yahoo boys. They are the ones who are taking over Ghana. Nigerians who are making mega money from advanced fee fraud and are using it for nothing but champagne, expensive cars, uh, expensive houses, expensive uh, wristwatches, necklaces and all what not. This is what they spend this money on. You are returning the money. The money you stole from a white person, under the guys that when they were colonialists, they oppressed us, you have returned it back to them by buying their champagne. You see the, you see the economy of confusion inside the mind of these young people. So, like, it is not a hopeless situation. It is not completely a hopeless situation. When I was still in school, there were those who made first class. There were those who did extremely well as young pastors and young religionists. There were those who gave us tutorials. I have a 28-year-old friend who has PhD, as you speak, a doctor in mathematics. He's a doctor in mathematics, a PhD in mathematics. 28-year-old, he has never been abroad. All his life has been in this country. Mm. We have several of them, and that tells you that this is not completely a hopeless situation. Society, again, what you do for me before that kind of what you do for me before I forget, Mr. Zachary, is to help us locate the mathematician. That's number one. <laughs> yeah, help us to look because okay. those are the type of people that can assist us to mentor others. Now, I, I also read, just, yes, of course. I also read just now, uh, lady, a lady in Benin, um, Ruth Usareme, also. Um, who is also uh, an engineer? She graduated from um, the university, of course, and um, she, um, she, 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 she does Uber or taxi five. Or no, I think her own is Bolt, some Bolt. Yeah, and then um, is another name for taxi five. Yes. So someone called taxi five now called Bolt. Whatever it is called, you see, this lady made a, in two months. She made about a million naira from Bolt. 
I saw the story this afternoon and I feel like, wow. So, and you park a car in the house and you park the other one there and you want to drive this other one and um, and, uh, and, uh, and you, have, you have a fleet of cars yeah, that you are going to see, yeah. all packed in your compound. Yeah. And average value that like, makes Lagos between makes... twenty to thirty thousand a day. Let, let yes, start. I know there are plenty. Yeah, there are plenty of frustrations with the job. Mm -hmm. I did Uber mm -hmm. myself. Talking to you, I've driven cab in Benin. Those who know me can attest to it. I've driven cab in Main Gate. When we were starting cab, we started the cab driving in Main Gate. But we won't see you. Does that has that removed anything from me? Has no. it made me less of myself? Of course not. I drove Uber in Benin. As soon as Uber came, I got. I didn't even buy a car. I did it on higher purchase. So I mean, there's no excuse whatsoever. No excuse. No excuse. No excuse. Um, I have a small question. Of course, for, I'm, I'm uh, coming to you. I, I want to find out from Please you. Please take a small question for comrade. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Please. Okay. Uh, comrade said that the Yahoo Yahoo boys who made money for white people, they spend it on uh, champagne back to the white people. So is it yeah. better for them if they spent it on palm wine and Ogugo? Would it be better? <laughs> And the argument is that when these people were in Africa, when they colonized our forefathers, they took our gold, they took our oil, they took our money, they oppressed us, took us on slavery. Uh, Yahoo, Yahoo is a way of recovering some of the things they looted from us. I agree with you. But as soon as you recover part of this money, you use it to buy champagne, you use it to buy Mercedes Benz. Mercedes Benz is made in Germany. The champagne you are buying, some made in South Africa, some made in France, and some made in the United States. You are immediately returning the money back to the people you collected it from. And the question so is, and the question is, the question is, so what I'm asking is, yeah. is it better if they use it to buy innocent vehicles and, yeah, and when, uh, when, I made the Nigerian <laughs> wine? There, no, there is there's no justification for crime actually. <laughs> But, I mean, if you should eat a frog, you should eat at least eat the one that has fat. That's what I'm talking about. I'm just joking. It was just a joke anyway. <laughs> but, okay. That, okay. I get this. That, that's okay. Um, um, I, want to find I want to find out from you. Um, like I said, we'll be inviting the, prof the, the mathematician, we'll be inviting um, the lady in Benin, uh, Ruto Sareme, who is a shining example, wonderful example. I think she needs an award. Um, we'll get to that. I want to find out from uh, um, uh, Madam Jennifer. In the UK, how many cars do you need? How many? Do you need one or two or three? I say maybe you need six up to ten. Yeah. Uh, do, you pay fee do you pay some levies? Do you, do you need to maintain? Does government take some money from you for owning a car i'm aware in the u.s also in the tell us what what are your experiences in the uk oh well in the uk for every car you have that isn't uh, electric you do have to pay road tax you do have to pay insurance and uh, those are basics you have to pay and depends on where you live but i would tell you that the huge uh, percentage of the population don't have more than one car. Hmm. So if you have maybe two, it's because maybe you have a wife, maybe a husband has one and a wife has one. But hardly do you find anybody having more than one car. And what do you need it for? How many cars does the Queen of England use? How many cars does the Prime Minister use? This uh, foolishness and wasting of funds polluting the environment is only found in Africa, where you find a governor going around in a covey of 20 cars. It's only one man. You'd only sit in one seat. Why do you need all that fuel being burnt and all those cars? It is the foolishness of, of, of black people. Mm. It's, this thing only exists in Africa. I have, <laughs> I have seen the, the president of, of Switzerland. I've seen his escort. It's only one car and two multiple bikes. I have seen that of the prime minister of the UK. So, like I said, this foolishness only exists in Africa. You know, because we, we have a culture of wasting. We have a culture that we must show off. We must show that we are coming. The governor is coming. Senator is coming. Honorable is coming. So he must come in this big jeep and there must be a lot of brouhaha because he's showing up. It's, it's all the foolishness of, of Africa. It doesn't exist here. Um, even when they come here, they're, they're pretty normal, ordinary people. Nobody really gives a toss. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before, um, before you go, lastly, I want to find out from you. 
Um, you, you've got an organization, you are helping this, you are doing that, and you are trying to impact on society. Uh, do you know, number one, how do you get funding? Do you know some ambition politically? Okay, I would like to categorically Lots of people have asked me this. I've been, at, I've been an active duties most of my life, and I have no desire to run for political office. I think political office in Nigeria is a quagmire. I think it's something that you would get into and you will never be able to help anybody because of the ruthlessness and the, the, the filth therein. So I'm sorry, it's nothing that, I'm not insulting anybody, but it's not for me. I'm not caught with that cloth. I cannot handle it. I want to help my people. And I had the privilege of Western education. I benefited from a system where um, social welfare was available. Uh, we had student loans and, and, and bursaries and scholarships of different kinds. That's why a person like me is an educated person today. I always think if I grew up in Nigeria, I may have been one of the hookup girls. That I always tell people. Maybe if I grew up in Nigeria, I would have been a <laughs> You're beautiful enough. Exactly. You don't need to be beautiful. Exactly. You don't need to be beautiful to, to do it. You don't need to be beautiful. You don't need. But I, I think the more beautiful you are, the higher you fetch. Anyway, but the no, the is, higher your price, Mr. John. Yeah. The higher your yeah, price. Uh, the beauty, the told, higher. I've been told. Um, but I had the privilege of a, of, of a system that allowed me to go to school, even though my parents were not able to contribute. I had that support from the society here, um, even up until my pros grad, you know, flexible systems where I can still work and I can still keep bettering myself. So I only want to give back. And this is what I'm calling on Nigerians, home and abroad. Instead of people calling for the dissolution of Nigeria, see, that is a foolish uh, construction to think that Nigeria dividing will, will change the situation. It's not going to work. Thinking that, oh, if only we put young people there, that's how things will work. I have had interactions with a lot of young people in Nigeria, and if we leave them the way they're going, Nigeria has no future. So we need to help. We cannot all sit and point fingers and say it's Fulani, it's Yoruba, it's Igbo. All of us have a responsibility towards Nigeria. We cannot continue to be selfish and comfortable in our lives and ignore the poor. So in terms of the funding of the Unity Project Nigeria, up until now, I have self-funded. A lot of people ask me, even my colleagues at work, say, how do you fund it? You know, how much do you earn? But I believe that a man's life is not in his material belongings. Generosity is of the heart, it's not of the bank account. So I have a generous heart and I love Nigeria and I want to do something back for my country. And I'm calling on anybody, wherever you are, love of Nigeria, support us, help us with giving skills to these young people, help us with financial support, help us with technical support. We have uh, uh, people who need just laptops. Some people just need a smartphone to start their business. You know, so the little thing, some people just need a sewing machine, a little space uh, to, to, to start the business. Whatever capacity you can help us with, let us together make Nigeria better. Let us stop pointing fingers because the people we're pointing fingers at have dual citizenships. They have houses in Dubai and Ghana and, and, and Cairo. So if anything happens, they will go. They, then Nigeria will be left to, to anarchy. And we don't want Nigeria to be in anarchy like Somalia. It is the giant of Africa. Mm. We must protect it. Mm. We must protect Nigeria. It is on us to protect Nigeria. Mm. Every single one of us. Mm. Thank you. Wow. Wonderful. Thank you so wow. very much. Thank you so very much. Mr. Zachary, your closing remark. Well, uh, like she has said, if uh, Somalia decides to become a faith, it's a country of about 20 million people or less. I'm not sure now. They have yet to go. If Ghana decides to become a failed state, they are just about 18 million, less than the population of Lagos. They have yet to go. But if Nigeria decides to become a failed state, where will 240, 220 million people go? Where in Africa would they go? It will shock you that Nigeria has even a higher population than the Russian Federation. The Russia that is so powerful that the U.S. are consistently negotiating with. So, like she has said, it has, no, it has nothing to do with whether you are Igbo, whether you are Yoruba, whether you are Hausa, whether you are Edo. Bad things will affect you anywhere it comes from. And it will affect anybody. 
The price of tomatoes does not know your ethnicity. Mm. The price of uh, whatever you want to buy does not know your ethnicity. Killer headsmen does not know you, don't know your ethnicity. They don't ask you where you come from before they kidnap. Uh, ritual killers will not ask you where you come from before they kill. Ritualism, for those who believe that ritualism brings money, I am not sure that there is ethnicity to the kind of blood that produces their phantom money. Mm -hmm. So I am going to appeal to Nigerians. We must all begin to reorientate ourselves and conscientize ourselves and agree that we have to build this country from the scratch. I am, I am one of those who is complete. I am a complete patriot. I consider myself a complete patriot because I believe in this country. I don't, be, I don't think there's anywhere else I can go that I'll that I'll be as comfortable as I am in this country. It's not, it's not all sweet. It's not all rose. It's not all smooth. You can see the lighting. You see how poor the lighting is. Or look at the lady in the UK. Check her lighting and check my lighting. I am battling with forces, both spiritual and physical, just to be in Nigeria. So, I, it, 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 but we still have to do what we need to do and help ourselves to get out of the situation we have found ourselves. I'm sure if all of us have this kind of heart of progress, we will get out of it sooner rather than later. Thank you so much, and thank John Mayaki fans for watching. And uh, I must thank all, uh, all those who are watching and making mention. I'm watching, and I thank all of us. Thank you so much thank for the so opportunity. Thank sir. you so very much. Um, as as you go, don't, forget. Go, don't forget to make arrangement for the professor. Um, if you have link or contact to the lady in Benin, Ruto Sarime, we want to appreciate you. We yeah. sincerely want to appreciate you for what you are doing over there in Benin. Um, a lady engineer becoming a boat driver. I mean, uh, we will think of what to do. Um, we have seen several girls who are angels at home. We, we have also seen them being demon in the presence and in the absence of their parents. Um, they, they took over their parents. Or they took after their parents. Um, in other words, youths who, pe who, 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 who perpetrate these heinous crimes always have just one target in mind. Money. Quick money. They are youths of this nation. Don't forget again that they are Christians. Or again, they are Muslims. They are, they are youths who have lost touch with their creator. They, they are youths who appear to lost contact with their origin. They work only with a warped imagination. They, they do not engage in deep thought. Nothing else matters after drug, I mean hard drugs and alcohol. Quite unfortunate. As we come to the end of this uh, program, we want to call on every one of you. We want to thank you, the guy who called us, um, Steve Adepoju, who narrowly who narrowly um, got helping him um, escape from kidnappers. And uh, some other guys who went before um, were not lucky. I, I, I think we must need to check this attitude of materialism and consumerism that has, um, that has become part of our culture. Where many people see fraud as the only way, where many people see kidnapping, where many people see ritual um, means of to make money, uh, on deeper reflection, however, uh, it epitomizes the present spirit of Nigerians' younger generation. The crazy way millions of Nigerian youth idolize get-rich-quick celebrities has fueled crimes such as yao yao, such as ritualism, such as kidnapping, such as drug peddling, such as arm robbery, among others, including what we find in our educational system. You see people flaunting exotic cars. You see people rocking designer wares with glittering accessories, as if to separate those that have made it from those who are trying to stay as legitimate as possible. Uh, I mean, the claim uh, as the strength of their manhood and the integrity of their professional craft could take them. Fundamentally, anyway, it, it is time for us to interrogate our value system. It is time for us to to look at, at some issues deeply, including materialism, consumerism, and the change to productive nation. It is time to stop demarketing our youth and face the real issue, which is our value system. Once again, I want to thank all those who participated, those who called, and to say, to do this, we need to call out the failure of both the leaders and the led. To do this, is to admit the failed Nigerian eco, econ, social economic system and the political system, the political leaders, and to rebuild 
them on the foundation of integrity, to rebuild them on the foundation of transparency, truth, and justice. We want to, again, thank you as we come to the end of this show. Stay safe. Don't be a tool in the hands of uh, political politicians. Don't be, um, we pray God protect us from kidnappers, from terrible um, proprietors and proprietresses. We pray God continue to keep all of us. Thank you so very much. Take care and bye for now.